I've put together a list of five side hustle ideas that I think are really going to make people a lot of money in 2023. And on top of that, four out of the five side hustles in this video have actually been trending higher and higher on Google Trends, which confirms that these four side hustles are really starting to gain some traction. So let's get right into it. The first side hustle on this list is flipping Amazon return pallets. So one of the reasons why Amazon is such a successful company and why people absolutely love shopping on the platform is because of its return policy, which happens to be super, super lenient. Their return policy basically allows you to return just about anything that you buy on the platform within a 30 day window. Now those returns will usually end up in one of two places. If the product is still good functionally and it still looks good cosmetically, then it will usually end up back at an Amazon warehouse where it's going to be relisted back on the platform, but usually at a discount. Personally, like 90% of the stuff that I buy comes from one of these Amazon warehouses, but I'm digressing a little bit. That's not really important. What is important, however, is what happens to all those other Amazon packages that don't end up at these warehouses. Those returns usually get liquidated to smaller businesses through Amazon's own liquidation marketplace. Now, the downside to this marketplace is that it's pretty much off limits to individuals like me and you. So if we wanted to buy one of these pallets, we've got to buy it through one of these third party liquidators. These liquidators are small businesses that buy these pallets in bulk and then they turn around and then they sell it to even smaller businesses or they actually sell it to individuals like us. And just in case you're interested, I put a list of those liquidation websites down in the description so you can check them out for yourself. Now, as big as an opportunity as I think this is, there's obviously some things to consider. The first thing is you obviously don't wanna go out there and spend more than you can afford to lose. You don't know the condition or what items specifically are coming inside of these pallets. So it obviously makes sense to just buy a cheaper one and see if you can flip those items for a profit. And if you can successfully flip that first pallet, then you can use the profit to buy another palette. Another really important thing to keep in mind is to look for liquidators in your local area because this is going to help you reduce the freight cost because some of these pallets, depending on the size, can weigh a lot. So ideally, look for the ones that you can pick up locally. Overall, this is the type of side hustle that is mostly for people who are a little risk averse and probably have some disposable income to put towards buying some of these Amazon pallets. But if you're not one of those people, don't worry. Maybe this next side hustle might be more along the lines of what you're looking for. At this point, I'm sure you probably noticed the amount of AI websites that have been popping up left and right every single day. It almost feels like there's an AI for almost everything now. Honestly though, this is really good news because this presents a lot of new opportunities to make more money. And one of those opportunities is selling AI generated art. Websites like Midjourney, Dolly, and Pixels are some of the more popular websites that give you the ability for free to create anything from simple abstract art to even more realistic portraits like the ones you've probably seen everybody using on Instagram. And all of this is accomplished by simply going on these websites, typing in a description of something that you wanted to create, and it will actually create that image based off of that description. It honestly blows my mind how AI is able to do this. And the crazy thing about it is that some of these images are pretty damn good. They're not flawless, but they're pretty damn good. Some of them are so good that I even thought about having some of them turn into canvas prints like this one that you guys see behind me. Like they're literally that good. Now, when it comes to selling AI generated art, I think the best approach, in my opinion, is to just try to sell some of these images on Etsy. There is a specific way that I would go about doing it, which I am going to cover. But the very first thing that I would do is probably do some research to find out what kind of art is currently selling. For this, I would probably recommend finding maybe two to three websites that are already selling art. And then I would go on these websites and try to sort by the best sellers. This would not only give me some inspiration, but this would also give me a pretty good idea of the kind of art that people are into. Once you find a few images that you think have really big potential, you can go back to websites like Midjourney and put in a very good description that describes the art that you think has the best potential and watch Skynet. I mean, and watch AI create something similar. So at this point, you would pretty much have your very own copyright free AI generated art that you can start selling. And you can use websites like Printful to put some of these images on posters, canvases, uh, mouse pads, t-shirts, phone cases, and sell all of those on Etsy. Now, the third side hustle in this video is honestly one that surprised me because it's not one of these hot new things like selling AI generated art. And it's definitely not one that I would expect to be trending higher on Google Trends. But the more I thought about it, I guess it actually does make sense because with so many people consuming content every second of the day, it makes sense why a side hustle like video editing would be trending. With the rise of social media and online content creation, the demand for talented editors who can create engaging and high quality videos will only continue to increase because 
Editing videos is one of those very time consuming tasks that most people don't want to deal with. And because of that, people will be willing to pay good money for an editor if it means it's going to save them some time. Personally, I have this love and hate relationship with editing. I love it because that's when I feel like I get to be my most creative. I get to experiment with a bunch of different things. And I love when I see something from another content creator that makes me go, yo, that shit was dope. Now on the other side, I hate it because again, it's such a time consuming task. Like there's been times where I spent months editing a video and it, at some point it just gets to the point where I'm just like, man, f this. Getting started as a freelance video editor is pretty straightforward. You obviously need a good computer. You're going to need an editing software. A lot of people might recommend Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, but personally, I recommend DaVinci. It's the industry standard and it's pretty much what all big, big box office movies are filmed in and you can do just about anything that you want to do with the free version now as for experience there's a wealth of great information that you can find on youtube from basic editing tutorials to color grading special effects everything you pretty much need starts on the youtube search bar once you get pretty comfortable with the basics don't be afraid to jump on websites like upwork or fiverr yes in the beginning you're probably going to have to charge a little bit less but that's just because you're getting started keep in mind if you charge a little bit less in the beginning and you continuously over deliver i can guarantee that clients are going to leave a five-star review and they're going to become a repeat customer. I would know because my editor is pretty damn good and that's exactly what happened. Now the fourth side hustle in this video is for people who would be interested in using their voice to make some extra cash on the side by becoming a voiceover artist. As a voiceover artist, your main goal is to use your voice to help convey emotions and to convey information. And you can do this through a variety of different niches. For example, you could do voiceovers for commercials, advertisements, radio spots, for audiobooks, or for those e-learning courses. Now, in order to get started as a voiceover artist, you're going to need the right equipment. And this doesn't mean that you need to go out and buy the most expensive audio gear. I can tell you right now that I've seen a lot of videos of audio engineers taking a cheap mic and making it sound just as good as that high-end mic by just doing a little bit of EQ. So you don't need the most expensive gear to get started. What you are going to need, however, is a good mic with a pop filter, something like the Lewitt 240 or 440 would be a great option. They're not too expensive. You're also going to need a audio interface to capture an analog signal and convert it to a digital signal. Personally, I use Audient. I don't think you can go wrong with them. I use them for all my YouTube videos and I absolutely love it. Now, this next thing is a bit optional, but it is something that does help your voice sound even even better and saves you a lot of time on the back end and that's a channel processor the one that i use is the dbx 286 everything you've been hearing so far in this video has been processed straight through it here's what it sounds like without it i'm gonna pause the button here and you let you listen to what it sounds like without it so everything that you're hearing right now is not being processed by the channel processor so it shouldn't sound as good as what you heard before and you probably won't be able to tell the difference if you're watching this on your phone you're probably going to need really good headphones to actually hear the difference so i'm going to put it back on and we're going to continue with this video now the last thing that you're going to need is a quiet place to record or in other words an acoustically treated room to record and i don't care if you have a thousand or two thousand dollar mic if your room is not treated it's not going to sound that good so once you have all this equipment it's time to start building your portfolio if you go on websites like voices.com you can actually find free demo scripts that you can use to build a portfolio and as far as finding work again just go on websites like fiverr uh maybe upwork voices.com voices one two three are all good options to start with and as you gain more experience you can also go to websites like voice crafters to get jobs that pay even as high is $3,000 per job. So one really interesting fact that I learned while doing some research is that voiceovers are actually treated just like music, meaning that you actually own the rights to your voiceovers and whoever hires you has to actually get a license in order to use those voiceovers. So in a way, you're kind of like a rapper, right? You you can say that you own your masters. So factors like how long the voiceover is going to be used for and where it's going to be used can actually play a big part in how much you charge for those voiceovers. I've read that you can charge as much as $10,000 for the licensing alone. Now, the last side hustle in this video is one that I recently mentioned in another one of my videos, and it's honestly, in my opinion, the most lucrative side hustle on this list. That side hustle is becoming an Amazon influencer. As you guys already know, Amazon is one of the largest online retailers in the world with a customer base that's in the hundreds of millions. So knowing this, becoming an Amazon influencer is a pretty big deal, like life-changing big deal. And it's a big deal 
specifically for these three reasons. The first reason, which I would say is probably the most valuable in my opinion, and that's the unlimited traffic that you would get to tap into. As an Amazon influencer, you would get direct access to Amazon's traffic. If you've ever tried starting a business, whether it was online or a brick and mortar business, then you know how important and how hard getting traffic is. It's the one thing that can literally make or break any business. The second reason, which I think is great for beginners, is that you don't really have to do any selling. People don't go on Amazon to be sold on a product. People go on Amazon because they're already sold on the product. They just wanna know that they're buying the right product, which is why reviewing products as an Amazon influencer is the best side hustle out there, in my opinion. The people watching your reviews already have their wallets out. They don't have to be convinced to buy anything. They're already convinced. The last reason is what makes Amazon such a successful business, and that's the fact that they sell just about any product that you can think of. It might be a monopoly, I don't know. But what I do know is that you probably have at least one product laying around your house that you either bought from Amazon or that is currently being sold on Amazon. And if you were an Amazon influencer, you can actually make a review of that product. And if people watch at least 30 seconds of that video, you would earn an affiliate commission. For people who buy a bunch of stuff off of Amazon, this would literally be like a dream come true. You could spend money on Amazon, but then you can get more money by reviewing the products that you bought off of Amazon. So it's really not a bad deal. So that guys was the five side hustles that I recommend checking out. I really love to know which one of these side hustles sounds the most interesting to you. And if you found any value in this video, leave a like, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.